I often, I often think that um, when we come to Mass uh, and we are, well, supposedly listen to the readings, because we heard them so often before, um, very often we don't take too much notice uh, because uh, they become, after a while, we, or we become over familiar with them. And so I just want to uh, go back over, uh, just very pick out a few words in the readings this, this morning and then go back and talk about those. That's uh, what I hope to do. Whether I succeed or not is another question, but I can only, I can only try hmm? and uh, do my best. So, thus says the Lord, say to those whose hearts are frightened, be strong, do not fear. And I want to um, go then down a little bit further. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened, the ears of the deaf be cleared. And in the lovely, beautiful responsorial psalm this morning, um, in, in the second verse, the Lord gives sight to the blind, the Lord raises up those who are bowed down. The Lord protects the stranger and the widow and the orphan. And then in the gospel, we have again the Lord healing uh, the man who was deaf and had an impediment of speech. Now, a uh, heart of hearing. Well, i tell you a, li a little story. An, old, an elderly man, because um, I'm an elderly man, he goes to, to the doctor and uh, he says to, to the doctor, I think my wife has a hearing problem. And um, the doctor says, well, he says, I can tell you, give her a little test. When you go back home, stand at a distance from her and just say, honey, what are we having for dinner tonight? And if she doesn't answer, go a little nearer and ask her again and go a little nearer and keep and keep going nearer and nearer until she answers. And finally, he's right up beside her and he says, Honey, what are we having for dinner tonight? And she says, I've already told you 11 times we're having meatloaf. So, you know, we all need, we, we, all, <laughs> we all need at times to look at our, ourselves. Now, in the, in the gospel this morning, and in, uh, there's an interesting word used if you go back to the Greek. And the Greek word used is for, um, the, the Greek word for mute, mute, is um, mo, mojilalos. Uh, I'll spell that for you. M-O-G-I-L-A-L-O-S. Mojilalos. And it's only used twice in the Bible, and, it's, and that is in the first reading this morning from Isaiah and in, in the Gospel of Mark, in the healing of the man deaf with an impediment of speech. And it doesn't mean uh, the man was totally mute, it means an impediment of speech. And that's where now we can look at that, look at, look at that, and now apply it to ourselves and get away just from the fact that Christ worked a miracle. What is the gospel? What are the readings saying to us here this morning? What are the readings saying to each one of us? Do we hear, when we come to Mass, do we hear what the Lord is saying to us? Do we ever take time to listen to the Lord? If you're growing in, in faith, one of the things you'll realize is that the Lord speaks to us on a daily basis, and many times during the day, 
in the various situations we encounter, in the people we meet, and in the various things that happen in our lives. God is speaking to us all the time. Do we hear him? Do we take time to listen? Prayer, the real definition of prayer, prayer has much more to do with listening rather than talking. And that's, isn't that the art of good communication? If you're married, how often, because men are very bad at this, how often has your wife said to you, you're not listening to me? I'm not looking at you, Jim, but, yeah. How, how often? Women, do you feel listened to? Do you, here's a good question. Do you feel listened to in the church? I think the answer would be no. Huh? I think the answer would be no. So, you need to listen. Everybody needs to listen more. From the Holy Father down. I think we have a good person in the Holy Father. He does listen. And then, what a, come to speech. What, what about speech? Well, what about speech? Um, do we, do we uh, keep our mouths shut or say nothing or become mute when we need to speak. Hmm? When you see the church being condemned and so on, do you try and defend in, 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 in some ways? Sometimes you can't defend the indefensible. I, I accept that. But we need, I think, more to stand up for our faith, stand up for our own beliefs. Very often we keep that very much hidden. We are very, we are very silent. And in the second reading today, um, there's a very important question there. Do we um, treat different people differently, depending on, I don't know, on maybe, as uh, St. James say, on the clothes they wear, or where they come from, or or how much money they have, or what kind of a car they have. Do we treat people differently? Well, I can't answer that for you. I can only answer that for myself. I try to be um, the same to everybody, but it's not always easy. So for example, for, ex for example, every one of you here will agree with me that it's very sad to see so many people homeless. You'll all agree with that. But you do anything about it. Simple things. If I, I normally, when I'm out walking, I normally, if I see somebody on, on the street, I say hello to that person and try and engage in a little con conversation. Treat them as another normal human being not somebody to be walked by and dismissed. Very often you find, when you talk to somebody like that, you find maybe a man or a woman who had a good job once, were made redundant, and consequently could not meet uh, the mortgage on their home and lost their home or their apartment and subsequently end up on the street homeless. Huh. That, that, that gives you a bit of a shock, huh? When you meet some, somebody like, like that. And don't, so I'm asking you, don't pass by them in a dismissive way as if they didn't matter. Sometimes all they need is somebody just to say, hello, how are you? How are you d doing? And it's amazing. It's amazing what comes from, from that. You have treated them, you have, as a human being, you have met their day. And I think, if you look at the culture in our country here at the moment, don't we tend to be 
I don't know, very dis dismissive of the poor and very often. We, we treat them from a distance. We don't want to get close. We might put our hand in our pockets and give them a cause, but we keep our d d d distance from them, right or wrong. And sometimes all it needs is a little word. Sometimes a little word of encouragement is much more powerful, important, and helpful than all the money in the world and all the talking about it. And somebody should do something about it. The somebody is you. The somebody, the somebody, the somebody is me. You know, the somebody in, in me. Um, I don't know now if I to tell you another little story before I finish and just give you a smile before I finish. Um, but with video cameras and so on, but you, but you know, that you have to watch. But anyhow, again, an old man. He goes to, to, to the doctor and he's not feeling well and he's feeling lethargic and he's feeling kind of miserable and so on. And uh, the doctor examines him and gives him some advice and the old man go, goes off. And a few days later, um, the old man uh, is walking down the street uh, and he's got a, a very beautiful young woman on his arm and he's got a very cheerful look about him and so on. And the doctor happens also to be coming up the street towards him and he says, thanks doc, he says, that was great advice you gave me the other day. What advice did I, did I give you, said the doctor. You told me to go out and get a hot mama and enjoy myself. <laughs> the doctor said, I didn't. I said you had a heart murmur and be careful. That's <laughs> <laughs> the way. Did you hear that? Yeah. <laughs> so there's your... <laughs>